I want to begin this message, um, our Memorial Day message. First of all, we want to thank each and every one for being here at Highest Praise Tabernacle this morning. And also for those that are viewing us live, we want to thank you for tuning in to our services this morning. And also invite you to come join us at Highest Praise. Uh, if you're searching for a, a church that believes in the fundamental basis of the Word of God for every area of your life, and um, that's what we teach, that's what we believe, we would love to have you come join us. Amen. I, um, I want to start this message off because it is memorial, and it's a, it's a memorial about those that have paid the ultimate sacrifice for our freedom. And, um, but, you know, the Bible tells us... Um, about, and, and I'm going to be going in the book of Amos, by the way, Amos 8.11, as you find your place there. This message is about a, a famine for the word in America. Now, you say, well, well this, what's this got to do with Memorial Day? Well, see, people don't understand something that I just want to touch bases with and leave it right where it's at. People, America was founded because People escape religious persecution. They come to America so that they could have the freedom to serve God. Now listen closely. Not the freedom to not serve God. Fun the fundamental basis of what it was about was so that they could escape this persecution so that we could have uh, one nation under who? God, and, and that's what people are fighting for. That's what people are, and every day to this very second, people are dying for our freedom. And the sad part about it, of it is, it's literally a spit in the face to America when we don't realize it's not your freedom to mock God, it's your freedom to follow God. That's what the fundamental basis of what America stands for. So that reason why in Amos you're going to see there was a famine going on. And, and, and honestly, this ties right in with Memorial Day because we need to understand something. You know, we tell people, thank you for serving for us. But if you don't know the purpose of why that battle is going on, it's good against evil. Right? Right? Memorial Day, let's look at this beginning in Amos 8.11. In Amos 8.11, it says, Behold, the, day come, the days come, saith the Lord God, that I will send a famine in the land. Now, not a famine of bread, nor a thirst for water. Listen to what he said. But a, of hearing the words of the Lord. Wow, you didn't know that was in there, did you? Famine is almost unknown in America when we think about thirst. Let's, I mean, I know we have it, but we, we've been blessed beyond description, America, hasn't we? We've been in the envy of the world. You know, most people are escaping other countries, countries to come where? To America. Why? Freedom. Because most of the people have food to eat. We're just blessed beyond measure. But you know, as we're going to see in the Bible, conditions can change. Now, we better wake up and realize, just think about this. Consider the, the seven years of famine in Egypt, right? I mean, they had everything, and all of a sudden, it was all gone. But I want you to also know in that story as well, that a man of God by the name of Joseph saved that nation because he followed God. Can I say this before I go any further? If we would really get somebody that had the guts enough to be what they claim to be, and that's a Christian, and follow the Word of God, we could turn away a lot of what's happening to this nation. People's lives wouldn't be taken in vain. I want us to consider this this morning, but the famine of this text is a little different. This is a famine for the Word of God. Notice what he said in Amos. He said, but of hearing the words of the Lord. Does that sound familiar? We're in a place now that people, we're a famine, we're in a famine because nobody's hearing God. We are accustomed to an abundance here also. As I think about the word of God. Let's be honest. How many of you have a Bible? 
How many of us know that we can open it and read and get the Word of God all we want to, right? So we have an abundance here, just like we have an abundance of food and water. We have an abundance of the Word of God. So have we been blessed where we don't have to go underground and, 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 and have church? We can get out and share the gospel of Jesus Christ with everybody, right? So the abundance of the Word of God is here. But still, yet, there's a famine that could come through at any minute. There are signs, by the way, as, uh, for such indifferences this morning. Let's be honest. For example, few churches growing through sharing the gospel. We put church on a format of, well, it's last on my list. I don't have to have it. See, so many few churches have gotten away from the foundation of what America was built on. We've gotten, let me tell you something, we've gotten away from what churches used to do. I, I remember as a kid, even though I wasn't involved in church much, well, let me tell you something, buddy. Whenever something was going on, people knew to go to the church. They did. People, look, the churches, the Word of God was shared. There's not many Christians that are out there now that are taking God's Word into the world. Notice we, we're going to go back to Amos 8.11 where he, he said that there's a famine going on. Now what would it mean to have a famine for the word of God? I just want us to understand this this morning in this message. I want to first of all address it this way. A nation without the Bible is a nation without freedom. A nation without the Bible is a nation without freedom. Now, how do I know this? Well, I have freedom. Yeah, but you don't, you don't get it. That's not freedom. That's Satan's lie. Get you away from the real freedom that you have. One nation under God. This nation is without freedom. Bible tells us in, in John 8, 32. We, I love this simple scripture. We even spoke of it this morning. And you shall know the what? The truth. And the truth shall make you what? So listen, a nation without the Bible, and a nation that doesn't believe in the Bible, can't have freedom. You can't have freedom. He says, the truth shall make you free. What is the truth? The Word of God. Church, it is impossible, totally impossible, to, ensl to enslave a Bible-reading people. It is totally impossible that if you give me a, a group of people, a nation that believes in the Bible, that that Trust in the Bible for the truth. You don't have a nation in bondage. The reason our nation is in bondage is because this is the last thing this world is looking at to be set free. People are dying every day in wars, these terrorists and everything. For what? For what? To make you free to do what? Choose whatever I decide to do. No. We're going to wake up one day and realize that if we haven't put God first, we're going to be on the opposite side. Throughout the Bible, Israel, every time they turned away from God, they got what? Destroyed. Every time God would line them back up, they'd go out there and the next generation, they got what? Destroyed. Every single time that God lines us up, we're blessed. We line up with God, we're blessed. As soon as we decide to get out there and, and experience freedom, as Satan so puts it, freedom to do what? Sin. Let's get real. Freedom in the world is freedom to do sin. What is sin? Everything that don't line up with the Word of God. No wonder Terrorists and tyrants hate the Bible. Have you ever noticed that? Have you ever seen terrorists that believe in the Bible? That follow God's word? Thou shalt not kill. I can tell you a lot of terrorists that don't have no concept of that. Do, do, do you, know, do you ha ever wonder why all these religious occults and all this stuff going on out there, the reason why they're against the Bible is because they know the word of God Sets the people free from the bondage of sin in the world. 
People know that if the Bible is their foundation, Satan can't touch them. That's why our nation is in the place that in. This nation's history reveals the Bible brings freedom. The history of the foundation of America, the development of a nation, is based on the Bible. God's preservation of the nation, even in war. Let me tell you something. You want to see a mess? You keep on letting America go away from God, and God's going to go away from America. You keep letting us claim every, every idol and every worship, and I'm going to tell you what, that means that people over there are fighting for your freedom for nothing. We need to wake up and realize that that's, this is so important. God wants this nation to experience freedom. But we better get back to the foundation of what America is built on. And that's the Bible, church. It's the B-I-B-L-E. That's what this nation is founded on. You want to do justice by people that have given their ultimate sacrifice? You trust in God. God look, God's supposed to be in charge, church. Churches have been guardians of freedom. Have been. <laughs> Churches, uh, listen, solid Bible preaching, teaching uh, children how to grow up in the, in the Bible. Listen, this solid Bible preaching is something that's really getting messed up. Because why? It's because we're all about the world. I believe that the reason why Amos said there's a famine for the word of God is because people are starving to death because they don't realize that they need God's word. We must realize also something else, that Bible reading, people keep freedom alive in their daily lives. See, let me tell you something. This nation... It's going to go down the wrong road because they're not going to follow God. But that doesn't mean our house has to do it. Just because the nation refuses to accept freedom through the Word of God doesn't mean that we follow them. We follow God because we want to experience freedom. Anybody don't want freedom? Freedom in daily living. Freedom to, to um, go about your days and share the gospel of Jesus Christ. I tell you another thing too this morning as we look at this memorial message that a nation without the Bible is a nation without foundation. Now you say, what's foundation? I'm, I'm glad you asked. The Bible tells us something so important in Matthew chapter 7. I'm, I won't go in verse 24. I, I want you to hear what the Word of God says about the foundation. What's the foundation? Anybody ever built something and didn't put a good foundation down? I know I had somebody put a building on my property when I was building my home, and it was so funny. They didn't put the proper foundation down. They just put a block on each corner. What happens? I'm going to tell you. Park your lawnmower on that thing. See that thing? If you don't have the proper foundation, it's going to crumble. All right, you've got to understand. In Matthew 7, 24, listen. Therefore, whosoever heareth these sayings of mine and doeth them... I will liken him unto a wise man which built his house upon a rock. And the rains descended and the floods came and the winds blew and beat upon that house and it fell not. For it was founded upon a rock. And everyone that heareth these sayings of mine and doeth them not shall be likened unto a foolish man which built his house upon the sand. The rains descended, the floods came, and the winds blew, and beat upon that house, and it fell. And great was the fall of it. And it came to pass, when Jesus had ended these sayings, the people were astonished at his doctrine. For he taught them as one having authority, and not as the scribes. Jesus had authority, but he was letting us know, church, that the foundation of this world is crumbling right beneath us. That listen, wake up and realize that the life 
or land built on the Bible stands. And the Word of God says that if it's not, it won't stand. God's Word pro provides a solid foundation. Building on the Bible, we withstand life storms. Let me tell you something, church. We need to realize that we have the moral decay of this country has just completely been crumbled. And the reason why I bring this to you is because, again... We have family and loved ones that's fighting for our freedom. And then we've got people sitting over here and mad and disgusted because they're doing it. we got people saying, well, I'm glad somebody's fighting for my freedom. But yet you're going out there and we're spitting in God's face when we allow sin to run our homes and our lives and our church. The ultimate warrior, the ultimate one that went to the cross was Jesus Christ. He's, he was beat and killed for you and I. And every time we allow the foundations to crumble in our lives, we're literally spitting in Jesus' face. We need a nation, we need a church, for crying out loud, we need a community that believes in the Bible. Now, I might make you mad if I do, it's okay. But whenever we tell people it's okay to sin, just come to church, we'll love you anyway. No. Foundation means we give them something to build on so next time they start building their life, they've got it built on something solid that won't deteriorate. The church needs to get back to teaching the Bible. Preaching the Bible. If you don't like what the preacher says, get over it. Or go somewhere where they don't. But see, the reason why churches are being crumbled, why churches are changing to keep up with the times, is because Satan is robbing us of our authority. We're allowing Satan. I heard a minister this morning we're allowing Satan to put more people in the pulpit than God. Think about this, church. Foundation. Apart from the Bible, we have none. No one knows right or wrong anymore. Well, let's put it this way. No one wants to say what's right or wrong because we might be judgmental. I heard someone say the other day, um, equal rights, equal rights about People, because they choose to live whatever lifestyles they live, that they have just as much right. Listen, go back and read your constitution on America. One nation under God. It's not one nation under your stupid comments and all this stupid mess, I shouldn't say stupid, dumb stuff that you've come up with that you think that we should accept. Let me tell you something. It's time that we realize we're going to be in a famine for the Word of God to the point we're going to be afraid to tell people, no, don't do that because it's against God's Word. We're, we're afraid to stand up for what we believe in anymore. It's a shame when we think about when we go to the gravesides, the wall, see all these names of these people that have ultimately sacrificed for our freedom. And, of course, we live in a society now that says freedom to do what you want. Well, God's always giving you that freedom to choose. God's not going to make you serve him. God's not going to make you do it his way. But I'm going to go on and tell you, you've never experienced freedom until you do it God's way. The Bible provides a moral compass. Does people know what moral means anymore? <laughs> moral. A moral compass. What's a compass do? Anybody ever been lost in the woods and had a compass? I never figured out how to read that thing too good. I, I kept trying to turn it. Okay, that's where I need to go. But a moral compass, church, is the Bible. 
The moral compass. A moral compass for what? Individuals. A moral compass for the nation. What is the Bible? The Bible provides a moral compass. What is the moral compass for? To steer you to God. To steer you to freedom. Let me tell you something. I believe with all my heart that if the churches and the nation would get up and, and, and not be afraid to stand up and declare the word of God in their homes, in the churches, in the communities, that we could see a change. We could see a change if people were afraid. Well, I won't get so-and-so's vote if I don't agree with them. Let me tell you something. The Bible does not say you can sit on a fence in your decisions. You either got to do it God's way or Satan's way. You've either got to agree with God or not. God's either your father or Satan is. Man, I, wouldn't it be wonderful if somebody actually stood the ground for what's right? And what's wrong? I believe God Almighty would shine down on this nation if we would just get back to God. But just like Amos, there's a famine going on. Everybody's all about everything but the Word of God. We must get back to the Bible, church. We must realize that to neglect the Bible is to starve the soul. And the results are the same as being in a famine. Remember, he said this is not a food famine. But listen, when you starve yourself of the Word of God, it's, it's the same results of starving yourself with food. See, you're going to starve. We're starving to death. No, I'm not talking about food. I'm talking about we're starving to death for the Word of God. You know how I can tell? Because whenever we go through a crisis situation, what do we end up doing? Just like the children of Israel. Whenever they went out there and run rampant and done all their crazy mess, what did they end up doing? They ended up coming back to God. Because they had run out there and done all they could do, and they knew they had gone out there and gotten in a mess, and God brought them back. Did God not never? God always brought them back. And God would bring this nation, God would restore this church and, and all the churches all over the world if we would just get back. Get back to God. But what's it going to take? Memorial Day is, is all about celebrating the beach. I'm not knocking it. I love the water. But isn't it strange that all the people that died for our freedom and the church is the last place we think of going on memorial? What greater memorial than to go into church and say, thank you, Jesus. And you can't come into this church and say, thank you, Jesus, if it weren't for the men and the women fighting the terrorists and all these other nations so that you'd have the freedom to walk in here and do just that. It's all interlocked together, freedom, church. And I just want to, you know, I, I want to go into this third part here. A nation without the Bible is a nation without faith. A nation without the Bible is a nation without faith. How do I know this? Romans ten seventeen put it this way. So then faith cometh by and hearing by the... And you say, well, pastor, we have faith. Let me tell you something. There's all kinds of faith you can have. But if you don't have biblical faith, you're going to come up short. Without the Bible, this nation is just running around with their head. What's the old saying? A chicken with his head chopped off. Has anybody ever seen a chicken with his head chopped off? Now, I'm going to go on and tell you. I'm not going to get off on that tangent because that's not me. But the first time I ever saw a, hick, a, a chicken with his head chopped off and he was still chasing me. <laughs> now I'm going to go on and tell you something, son. No way that <laughs> he was thinking. And, and, and I was running and my sister screaming as hard as we could all the way across the chicken coop. And that rascal was still coming after us. That's the way this nation it is. We're running around with our heads chopped off, don't know which way to go. That worked out pretty good, didn't it? <laughs> because we're not walking around in faith. We're a nation without faith. Paul actually described to the, to the Romans in, about uh, 
description of, of a nation in faith. Paul describes the problem. And, and I want to say this so slow to you. In Romans 10, verse, listen to what he, Paul said. Brethren, my heart's desire and prayer to God for Israel is that they might be saved. For I bear them record that they have a zeal. Please listen to this, church. A zeal of God, but not according to knowledge. For they being ignorant of God's righteousness and going about to establish uh -oh, their own righteousness have not submitted themselves unto the righteousness of God. For Christ is the end of the law for righteousness to everyone that believeth. Now, church, I, I, I moved through everything pretty fast, but I want to go back to verse 3. We need to realize why we have a famine for the Word of God in this nation. Please, I'm going to read this to you again. Somebody just take the minute to think about this. For they being ignorant of God's righteousness and going about to establish their own their own righteousness here's the key don't miss it have not submitted themselves unto the righteousness of God Paul said they were ignorant they're walking around claiming God they're, they're walking around claiming their own righteousness does that sound familiar we living in a place come on church we're living in a world right now that everybody's claiming righteousness. You ask everybody on the media or anywhere else that's doing something against God, guess what they say? I believe in God. I believe God made me this way. I believe God's a forgiving God. No matter what I do or say, He's going to forgive me. Own righteousness. We wonder why this nation is being bombed and bombed and bombed by terrorists. It's because we're not following God. You want God to stop the enemy? You stop letting the enemy run our lives. I don't know how any of us can go to the wall and look at all these people. Or better yet, do documentaries where you go to veterans' homes. And go, go to those that have had their legs blowed off and their arms blowed off. And, and, and I, I'm, I'm telling you, church, the, the type of warfare we have now is just totally destroying a human body. How can we go look at them and, and sit back and say, thank you for a freedom? How can, how can we say that? Because we're, we, we're messed up as a nation. You're thinking, wow, preacher, you... You know, you sure ain't helping this Memorial Day sound any better. Let me tell you something. It's not going to be any better until we wake up and realize what real freedom is. Paul states that a zeal of God, but not according to knowledge. They were ignorant of God's righteousness. The Bible imparts seeds of faith in this church. The Bible imparts seeds of faith. Faith comes by Hearing and hearing by the word of God. See, the Bible imparts that seed into us. Here's the problem. We've got this corruptible seed that's being planted all over this world right now. In fact, in 1 Peter 1, 23, Paul, here's what Peter said. Being born again, not of what? Corruptible seed. Somebody get this next statement. But of incorruptible. By the word of what? which liveth, abideth forever. See, listen, if you're born again, you're not born of corruptible seed. So when somebody tells you that they're Christians and don't believe this and obey it, they're lying. You can't say that. And going about, listen, and it says that, but of incorruptible by the word of God. See, we're supposed to be a seed that's incorruptible. Boy, is, is, is that not messed up? Is this nation not corrupted? 
Look how many churches is being bombed. Because look how many Christians are being martyred. Because they believe in Jesus. How about the young lady in that school one time that claimed that he says, pointed a gun to her head and said, deny Jesus. She didn't. He killed her. You don't think we live in a nation that's messed up? I'm just saying, we're supposed to be incorruptible because of the seed is Jesus. Church, look, neglecting, neglecting the Bible is like having a famine for God's Word, just like Amos said in 8.11. I'm, I'm going to go back to Amos 8.11 so I can bring this message to where I need it to go in closing. Listen, Amos said in 8.11, Behold, the days come, saith the Lord God, that I will send a famine in the land, not a famine of bread nor of thirst of the water, but of hearing the words of the Lord. Do you know why people can't hear? Because he's made you deaf to it. Well, Pastor, that's not true. How many of you know right now and, and listen right now, how many people you've told in your family or out there trying to tell them about Jesus, but they pay you no mind? How many people you know of right now, you tell them this is wrong, they pay you no mind? You know why? It's because of the famine. That's taking place in this nation right now. The famine that's destroying the foundations of America. Church, great national wealth is found in the faith in its people. I believe with all my heart that if, if we would start standing for the word of God. I believe if, if we would start Absorbing the word of God. What's famine mean? Famine means that people are starving to death, right? Right? Church, God is trying to tell us something. That this world is starving to death. Not for food and water, but for the word of God. And it's amazing that we've got 10 million denominational names. But yet, we're living in a world that's starving to death for the word of God. Why? It's because it's not being preached. People are afraid that they'll turn off. Well, I like so-and-so. He's just super nice. I like that preacher. All he does is grin. I like that preacher. He's never said an insulting word to me ever. I, I, I like going there because there's so many people there that nobody even know if I'm there or not. I like going there because you know so-and-so goes there and, 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 and they're famous. That's where I go. Church, I, I, I'm being sarcastic, but I'm going to go on and tell you, very few do you hear say, I go to that church because they preach and teach the Word of God uncompromising, and if you don't want to hear it, you better not go there because they're not going to sugarcoat it. They're not going to dance around it because let me tell you something. If God is in something, Satan can't tear it down. But if Satan is in charge, it will fall. This nation's only hope is, is that godly men and women will get up and take a stand so that our children won't try to figure out and look in the mirror whether they're male or female so we won't have to worry about this crazy mess going on in school. You can't look on the bathroom now and say, is that a girl or a guy? Fire me. It's, what shocks me is this. We're spending all our time focusing on this stupid mess that Satan has got us blinded by and not even realizing what his big purpose is, to get our eyes off of God. Because somebody get this. If we get our eyes back on God, if we get our focus back on the Word of God, if, if we put our faith in the Word of God and not of this world, so what? This world's going to go down. You don't have to go down with it. You want God to bless you? Give the Word of God strength in your home. Believe it. Walk by faith, not by... Don't look around and say, Oh, look at the mess going on around us. No, you better look around and say, God's got it taken care of. I'm going to put my trust in God. 
Is this nation going to change? Well, the Bible is clear. We're running out of time, church. Now, let me explain something to you. We all make that statement. We're running out of time. 9-11. You couldn't get in a church. Everybody thought it was over. It's over. Where did everybody go? They went to church. I bet you there were some serious offerings took up during that couple months, don't you? I bet you a lot of churches gained off of that one. Guess what happened after they realized it wasn't over? They all left. See, the problem of Atlanta is this. I'm, I'm going to tell you something. Read your Bible. We're in the last days. I don't like, I don't like for people to say that to me. Because, I, I, you know, I, I want to do all I can do for God. I want to live. I, I get it. But I realize one thing. We're running out of time. It should, it should break our hearts to look around and see what's happening right under our nose. It ought to break our hearts to realize it's just like in, in, in my family. The only time they plan something is when I'm in church. Satan is single-handedly destroying the nation, and we're allowing it. See, we can't get up there and say, well, God, you know, Satan made me do it. I, have, I know Flip Wilson had a problem with that when he stood before the Lord, don't you? He coined that phrase. I, don't, I guarantee it might have worked here, but it didn't work when he got to see Jesus. But let me tell you something, church. We can't blame nobody but ourselves. You give me a home that the foundation principles of it is on God. I show you a home that Satan can't destroy. You give me a church that they spend more time talking about the Word of God than they do griping and grumbling about the mess. I show you a church that God will bless. You show me somebody that before they come to me, they know what the Bible says, and they'll do it. <laughs> Preachers will be out of a job. Here's what God said. You give me a nation that decides that we're not going to sit back and take this garbage anymore, that our aunts and uncles and everybody that's dying for your freedom that we're not going to take this anymore. Let me tell you something. I've got school teachers in here too. You know, and I had to go back to school. And they want to, they want to teach us about these other religions. And in order for you to pass, you've got to know it and understand it and learn it. Our own grandchildren right now are even making statements. Well, in school they're teaching us that, that they're just like us. Now, I'm not lying to you. So guess what they come back and do? Now, here's where we close it. Guess what the children are coming back and telling us? Well, Grandma and Grandpa, you know, um, they're saying that y'all are one-sided, that, um, uh, that we're supposed to love everybody just as they are. Well, that's the Bible. But see what Satan is doing? He says, so we got to accept them. No. You don't accept nothing that don't belong to the Word of God. We don't accept nothing. But see, our, our children right now, our grandchildren are told that they must accept it. And I ask them, and they might even be listening. So what are you going to do if, if she brings home a girlfriend? You know what they said? Accept it. Does that not bother anybody but me? One nation under God? I don't know what God they're under, but they're not under God, Almighty God, because God said in His Word, and the bottom line of it is this, if we've got to get back to God, this nation has got to get back, and I believe with all my heart, if we become hungry enough for the Word of God, that we will start devouring it. And we talked about the food. How many of you ever sat down and eaten and been starved to death? The preacher kept you past 12 o'clock and, and, and you were about to die to eat. You went to the buffet and it was like hog sloth going on over yonder. 
come back with your plate stacked this tall? I've seen some of you. I, I done seen you. You come back and you, you got so much on, I'm just waiting. I'm like, wow. And, it's, and they... <sighs> what would happen if we had that type of desire for the Word of God? Oh, man, let me tell you what's going to happen. And I'm closing. Let me tell you what's going to happen when we have a desire for the, uh, that Word of God. There won't be no famine in your temple. See, God done showed me something. He said, let me tell you something. If you quit eating all that junk food, and I'm talking spiritual. If, if you quit eating all that junk food, what's that junk food? Sin. And you start eating the Word of God. He said, I'm, I'm going to make you spiritually healthy. Come on, church. I, I, I'm going I'm to bless you ab above measure. See, when, when you start digesting and devouring my word, he said, I'm going to come into your situation and I'm going to bless everything that's going on in your life. Does anybody in this room don't want to be blessed? Good Lord, everybody wants to be blessed. But let me tell you something. Until we get back to the Word of God, it's not going to happen. God's not going to say, well, I feel sorry for America. They've just lost their way. I better step in. It ain't happening. Jesus has already done that. And we better wake up. So as a memorial message, I want us to understand something. We owe, we owe those that paid the price. We owe them to pay the price of what? To bring this nation back one nation under God. That's what it was found. That's America. That's what we were founded on. We were founded on the principles of the Word of God. And you know what? We want to do justice to those that we claim to thank the Lord for, that, we, that they sent them and they died for us so that we wouldn't have to die. You know what? We, we, we claim, thank you, Jesus. Every time we say, thank you, Jesus, guess what? Thank you, Jesus. For what? Forgiving me of my sins? No, we should thank Jesus by not sinning. You know, I, 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 don't, I didn't know how this message was going to touch whoever or whatever, but when I, when I see the devastation that's taking place in this world, and I see how nowadays that we can't have a voice of opinion because it might not be politically correct, we can't voice opinion because it might insult someone. We can't voice our opinion to our children because we're living in a society now that, um, that says that we can't. Church, do you remember as, as we close? How many of you remember when you were in school? There was three rules that was brought down when you went in school. Here's the three. If you didn't do right, the teacher tore you up. And then you were sent to the principal, and they tore you up. And then they sent a, known, a note home with you. You, you better not hide it, because then they got it, and then they tore you up. And then if you tried to hide it, you got a worse whooping. Do you know nine days right now, children in this system that we've got in this world, right now all over the world, that they're, if they get mad at their parents, they're going up and telling them, well, you know, my mom and dad abused me. My mom and dad uh, beat me, and they're being carried to court. Look around you, church. If you don't believe me, go on the Internet and look at how the children are disowning the parents. I love it what a, uh, a lady said that just was perfect. Her son, grandson come home. She was having to raise him because the mom was out there doing whatever she wanted to. He come home and says, if you touch me again, I've been told by my school, my school counselor that, that, I, I, that I can turn you into social services. Now, if, if you, you've got to understand my old country term here. But she grabbed him by the nap of the head. You know what the nap is, right? She grabbed him right by the nap of the head. She drunk him right down there to the master. She said, um, said, can I help you? He said, yep. My son, my grandson just come home and told me that if I beat him for not doing right, that uh, y'all were going to have me arrested or you were going to take him away. She says, good, I brought him here with his suitcases. You have him. That's what kind of nation we're living in, guys. We better wake up.
one nation under God. Let's pray for our nation today. Let's pray for our loved ones that have gone on to be with the Lord, that have paid the price for our freedom. Let's pray today that we will get back to the Word of God. That's just as simple as I know to put it. Let's open the altar. This altar's open, church.